Let us begin our celebration of love and thanksgiving in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the joy and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. To prepare our hearts to remember and give thanks, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and for strength. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now, once more, the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The descent of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Day fulfilled the promise made by Jesus at the Last Supper and before He ascended into heaven. From that moment on, mankind started becoming the new people of God, characterized by harmony, solidarity, and brotherly love. A Proclamation from the Acts of the Apostles when the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, the disciples were all in one place together. And suddenly, there came from the sky, a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then, there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement, they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, and Arabs. Yet, we hear them speaking in our own tongues, of the mighty acts of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, send out your Spirit, and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, 
You are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O Lord! The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit, and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever, may the Lord be glad in his works. Pleasing to him be my theme, I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit, and renew the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit, and renew the face of the earth. The community of Corinth was plagued by divisions and rivalries. With fatherly concern, Paul exhorts them to be united in the Holy Spirit, the source of all gifts. A proclamation from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons. And we were all given to drink of one Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come Holy Spirit, come, and from your celestial home shed a ray of light divine. Come, Father of the poor. Come, source of all our store. Come, within our bosoms shine. You, of comforters the best, you, the soul's most welcome guest sweet refreshment here below. In our labor, rest most sweet, grateful coolness in the heat, solace in the midst of woe. O oh, most blessed light divine, shine within these hearts of yours, and our inmost being fill. Where you are not, we have not, nothing good in deed or thought, nothing free from taint of ill. Heal our wounds, our strength renew, on our dryness, pour your dew, wash the stains of guilt away. Bend the stubborn heart and will, melt the frozen, warm the chill, guide the steps that go astray. On the faithful who adore, and confess you evermore, in your sevenfold gift descend. Give them virtue's sure reward, give them your salvation, Lord, give them joys that never end. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us open our minds, open our lips, and our hearts to the reading and the living of the Holy Gospel as written by Saint John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. 
My dear friends, what we heard is the good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magandang araw po. Maligayang kapistahan po ng Pentecostes. Para sa araw na ito, nais ko pong pag-usapan natin ang ilang bagay tungkol sa charismatic baptism in the Spirit, tungkol sa trances, sa gift of tongues, at saka being slain in the Spirit. Alam ko pong very contentious na topic ito na pag-usapan ngayong Pentecost Sunday. Pero hindi naman dapat. For myself, my vocation was inspired, I believe, by a movement with charisms in the Catholic Church. Huh? I have had a speaking in tongues moment even in my own private prayer. So, this is not against the charismatic movement or any movement endowed with charisms by God. Ang strong message ko lang dito ay ito. Mag-ingat po tayo at maging maalam. And I will be wearing my hat now as a deliverance minister in the diocese po ng Novaliches. Ayun lang po, maging mapanuri at mag-ingat sa mga nakasanayan ng practices natin. Nais ko pong simulan ang sharing natin with a quote from the Venerable Fulton Sheen. Sabi niya, There just isn't any such thing as a charismatic church. There isn't any such thing as a baptism of the Spirit distinct from sacramental baptism. That is why St. Paul, in his epistle to the Corinthian church, said, Sure, you are baptized. You are in Christ. End of quote. I agree with that statement po. Alam nyo, the Catechism of the Catholic Church does not even mention the phrase charismatic church. Rather, it describes the church as missionary endowed with hierarchy and charismatic gifts. Ibigay ko lang ang ilang excerpt ng quotation from Lumen Gentium number 12. Ha? These charisms, whether they be more outstanding or the more simple and widely diffused, are to be received with thanksgiving and consolation for they are perfectly suited to and useful for the needs of the church. Extraordinary gifts are not to be sought after, nor are the fruits of apostolic labor to be presumptuously expected from their use. End of quote. At sinabi rin ni Santa Teresa of Avila, ang warning sa kanyang aklat na interior castle, she warns souls that when they learn or hear that God is giving souls extraordinary graces, sabi niya, you must never ask or desire Him to lead you by that road. Tapos she goes on to explain bakit. Sabi niya, first, it shows a lack of humility. Second, one leaves self open to great danger because the devil needs only to see a door left a bit ajar to enter. Third, when a person has a great desire, he convinces himself that he is seeing or hearing what he desires. End of quote. So ang unang warning natin is about speaking in tongues. Bakit may warning tayo? Dahil dito, may mga preachers sa charismatic movements na nagtuturo ng ganito. Tongues is a gift of praise, sabi nila. It is one of God's gifts. That is what makes it important. God wants you to have this gift. Direct quote po yan, ha? Sa isa sa mga manuals na ginagamit ng mga charismatic movements. Mga kapatid, The most important grace that will see us through our journey through holiness of Christian life is not the gift of tongues, which is an extraordinary grace. Kung hindi, ang ordinary grace na tinatawag nating 
sanctifying grace, habitual or actual graces na na-receive na natin through our sacramental baptism, confirmation, and other sacraments of the Church. Natural kung Protestant ang roots ng Life in the Spirit manual na ginagamit, hindi pag-uusapan dyan ang tungkol sa habitual or actual grace. Ha? Wala namang kasing sacraments ang Protestants. Eh. The way we understand them, meron lamang silang tinatawag nilang ordinance. Voluntary lang yon, Optional. Kaya mayroong baptism of the Spirit. Sinasabi ng iba, Father, hindi naman talaga baptism yun eh. Renewal lang ng binyag. Eh, hindi pala eh. Then don't call it baptism of the Spirit. Nakakalito lang yan. Kaya sinasabi kong mag-iingat po tayo. Balikan natin muli ang isyo ng speaking in tongues. Marami sa nakaranas sa so-called speaking in tongues during or after the so-called baptism of the Spirit ay walang voluntary actions sa paggawa ng gibberish sound. Bakit daw? Tatlong bagay siguro. Una, kasi sinanay na nila ang dila nila during the workshop period. O kahit kung walang workshop, ikalawa, yung repetitive motion or sound ng kinakanta o ng instrument being played probably help induce a trance state sa participants. In fact, may mga tao nga tayong kakilala na napakabilis pumasok sa trance state due merely to human suggestions. Ecstasy ba yun? Remember, majority ng umaaten sa Life in the Spirit seminars ay naroon to learn more to love God. In fact, nagsisimula pa lang silang matutong manalangin. Ang extraordinary graces, tandaan natin, are given almost always ha, to those who are deep in spiritual prayer and sacramental life. And this grace is usually done in secret at ikatlong dahilan. At kaya naman ito ang primary basis ng ating warning. Ha? Maaaring manghimasok ang masasamang espiritu sa mental experience na ito dahil ginawa mong very vulnerable ang consciousness mo. That is why napaka-common ang exorcism cases sa mga taong mayroong di umanong gift of tongues. Tingnan natin ang malakas na warning na ito very seriously. You know, I want to show you some of the shocking things and, and just how similar they are to the kundalini cults of Hinduism and the New Age movement, Eastern religions. And my background is I've been involved in the charismatic movement myself for over 25 years. I've been part of the prophetic movement. I was part of that movement for 11 years. So I saw all of this incredibly alarming and disturbing stuff coming in uh, while I was involved. I first heard about this man, Rodney Howard Brown, in about 1993-94. He was holding huge meetings in the United States, very popular, and was starting to have a huge influence with his drunkenness. He called himself the Holy Ghost Bartender, and he would lay hands on people, imparting to them this laughter, or he would wave his hands at people, and this laughter would overcome them, or shaking, or uncontrollable jerking. Uh, all these manifestations were starting to happen. And uh, he became huge in the word of faith, because he's a huge prosperity preacher. So he uh, got himself on Kenneth Copeland's uh, television program, and you can see them behaving drunkenly on stage, live on television. The Toronto blessing, everybody knew what that was about. People falling down, acting drunken, laughing hysterically, shaking uncontrollably, or uh, jerking backwards and forwards, their, their head shaking back and forth, people even roaring like lions, people making animal noises. Now the basic question that we're asking in this documentary is why are these manifestations so similar to Eastern religions and Hinduism and the Kundalini cults and yet they're not found in scripture, they're not found in the Bible, they're not found in classical Christianity at all. <laughs> Of 
course, in Hinduism, one of the most common ways of experiencing a kundalini awakening is through a guru placing his hand upon your forehead. This is called Shaktipat. And when they do that, you'll be infused with this incredible love and this wave of emotion. You'll fall down. There'll be all these manifestations, maybe animal noises, uh, joy and weeping and shaking. This is a kundalini awakening. And amazingly, it is exactly the same as what we have been seeing in the Toronto Blessing. Now, one of the very clearest signs of a kundalini awakening has always been these kriyas. You see this woman involved in the New Age movement. She's walking along exhibiting these kriyas happening, involuntary uh, jerking motions. And the staggering thing about it is that we are seeing again and again and again these exact same type of kriyas right through the Toronto movement. This has always been one of the clearest signs of Kundalini that we know of. As we've already seen, these same spasmodic head movements in Hinduism are taken as a sure sign of a Kundalini awakening. Why then are we now seeing them in the church? Kaya, ano ba ang mungkahin natin? Kung kayo po ay naanyayahan sa Life in the Spirit Seminar, sa Christian Life Program, o hindi kaya sa Christian Life Seminars, specifically, ask kung merong bang speaking in tongues dyan. Don't just ask kung Catholic, kasi most likely, Catholic-sponsored seminar yan, kung Katoliko ka. Kung merong trend yan ng receiving the gifts of tongues, ayan, dyan kayo mag-ingat. For your own spiritual good. Yes, kahit may Catholic priest pang spiritual director yan, o may approval ng Catholic bishop, hindi ko sinasabing huwag kang umaten. Ang sinasabi ko, mag-ingat ka. Pwede mong lagpasan ang baptism of the Holy Spirit dahil nabinyagang ka na naman eh. At dapat kang tumanggi sa phenomenon of speaking in tongues. Sa panahon natin, alam ninyo mga kapatid, kung merong dapat binibiyayaan si God ng gift of tongues or languages, alam nyo kung sino yan? Walang iba kundi si Pope Francis. Ha? In fact, wala naman akong alam na Pope na nag language saying that he is possessed by the Holy Spirit to speak in tongues sa harapan ng papal audience na international ang attendance. At kung titignan mo naman ang mga kasama mo sa seminar na yan, puro naman kayo Pilipino, di ba? Bakit kailangang mag-speak in tongues ka na naranig ng iba kung sa normal na lingwahe mo ay magkakaintindihan na kayo at hindi na kailangang ng interpreter? Again, mag-ingat. At ito pa ang sinasabi ko. In keeping with Paul's exhortation, we do not forbid speaking in tongues. But, as Paul says, should the rare gift be given, propriety and order must be observed. Without these, the so-called gifts should not be acknowledged as coming from God. We repeat these exhortations here, in the light of the countless accounts of both subtle, and overt, diabolic possessions, triggered by artificial and induced glossolalia in many Catholic worship gatherings. Tandaan po natin, hindi natin binabawalan ang Holy Spirit to blow where He wills. But, should this rare gift be given at all, propriety and order should be observed. Alam niyo ba ang unang sign na hinahanap ng exorcist sa sinasapian ng demonyo para malaman kung totoong may sapi ng demonyo sa kanya? Speaking in foreign languages. Alam niyo, meron po kaming case na ganyan. Yung may sapi, sumasabay sa Latin prayers ng pare. Hindi naman alam ng biktima ang Latin. Alam niyo po, meron pa nga isang exorcist na nasabihan ng demonyo, Father, review your Latin. Aha, sa totoo lang, nakakatakot, di ba? Tingnan natin ang phenomenon ng slain by the Spirit. Fresh 
That's glorious on you, my dear. Fresh wind, kids! Fresh wind! Here! 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 Come on, into voice and pray. Here, guys. Here, guys. Here, here. Here, here, here. Bring that girl here. Fresh. O ano, sa palagay ba ninyo, gawain ng Spiritus Santo yan na magpatumba ng tao? Iwasiwas mo lang ang iyong Amerikana? Iwasiwas mo lang yung barong mo? Patungan mo ng kamay sa ulo? Magpipray over ka? Tapos mabubuwal siya? Aba, eh kung ganun pala, bakit kaya hindi mag-gather ang lahat ng mga Christian pastors at Catholic priests? para i-pray over ang mga mamamatay tao sa mundo para mas lame na lang sila mabuwal bago mamugot ng ulo noong dumating ang angel kay Mama Mary para ibalita ang katotohanan ng siya ay ang maglilihi lalang ng Espiritu Santo nabuwal ba siya? hindi po noong nagpakita si Jesus kay Pablo nagtrans ba si Pablo? hindi nahulog lang siya dahil nagitla siya sa liwanag. Sa pagtatapos, tandaan natin ang dalawang katotohanan ito. Una, divine spirits do not possess individuals. They have the deepest respect and highest regard for man's freedom, intellect, and will. Ikalawa, alam niyo po, in Christian theology and spirituality, there is no such thing as divine possessions only demonic possessions many modern saints never had extraordinary graces given them while still living among us they tell us that living a life in the spirit is simply living our ordinary lives with extraordinary love and passion happy feast of the Pentecost. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us lift up to God all our prayers. After every petition we shall say, Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. That the whole Catholic Church may be, at all times, an instrument of reconciliation and a promoter of unity among all peoples. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. That the Holy Father and all the other leaders of the Church may constantly provide the faithful with an inspiring leadership. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, we need you. That all those engaged in the teaching profession may instill authentic values in their students. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, we need you. That all the civil leaders throughout the world, especially in our country, may be guided solely by concern for the common good. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, we need you. That those among us, who are burdened with trials of whatever kind, may experience the healing and strengthening presence of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, we need you. 
Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, we need you. Spirit of life and holiness, guide our hearts into the way of love and service. May we be valid instruments in the building of the kingdom, where you live and reign with the Father and the Lord Jesus, one God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Wash away, O Lord, my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray now, my dear friends, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God our loving Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, we the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me
The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Roberto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Coming together as God's children, with confidence we call on our Heavenly Father in the words of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do not allow us to fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The love and peace of Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us joyfully offer each other the sign of love and peace. Peace be with you all. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, my dear friends, Behold him, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Jesus grant us healing and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Panis vivus et vitalis, hodie proponit. My Jesus, I believe that Thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love Thee above all things, and I desire Thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive Thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though Thou wert already there, I embrace Thee and unite myself wholly to Thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from Thee. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. 
be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known, that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer our prayers. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the abundant spiritual blessings you bestowed upon us. We are grateful as well for the material blessings no matter how abundant or scarce they are, for our stewardship. We pray in your mighty name to break any evil seals and consecrations, curses and spells, unholy ties, links, evil relationships and bondages that had been cast to, made over, or forged through the material and monetary blessings we receive, own, and keep. Help us remember that these are given for your glory and for the greater service of the Church and of humanity. And we ask you to bless all our relationships. These are yours, O Lord, and we submit all these under your most glorious authority. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, loving and serving the Lord in one another. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Palapakan natin ang Panginoon. Happy Feast Day of the Pentecost.